Hello. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Hello, Phoenix Group. And hello, YouTube followers. <clears throat> For those of you that are following on Catch Up. <coughs> good evening, good day, good afternoon, good morning, wherever it is. In the good, good middle of the night. Depends where you are watching and when you're going to be watching this on Catch Up. Uh, I... I uh... <laughs> Uh, we are sorry we are late. It is quarter of an hour late and we are late because Gary and I have just finished a coaching session and then shoved a load of food down our necks very quickly. Very quickly. Hi, Grace. Great. Hello. Grace is first in. Uh, Vivian's there. Hello, hello. Hi, Sarah Lou. Elizabeth's here. Hi, Libby Morrison. Hello from Shetlands. That's Libby. So, Gary, we just had a really great session, didn't we? We did. Oh. We just... Oh, Nova! Hello, darling! Um, it was Hello. absolutely lovely because we, we have our, our Phoenix Warriors going through their 10-day challenge and we get to see them and talk to them for the first time that's not texting on a telly. Oh, it's great, isn't it? It it's, is. It's, it's so nice. It, it's really lovely, and we we get we get to see them in person. I'm just whizzing through some photographs to see if I can find a particular photograph I want. And and there they were, all of them in their little light. I think we had what five tonight? Did we have in a little group together tonight? So we had people from America, and we had three from UK, and we were all on a, a really good live together. Ha, ha, uh, live show no hello. coaching session i'll get my i'll find my words in a minute uh monica's here hello, hello. ahoy uh love the question for tonight i've crone so any stomach questions fascinate me oh yes we've got that Ooh. to go through first haven't we hi guys hi angela hello. new york usa hello hello from sweden hello randy's here again hi again all um uh gosh you're going up so fast morning from australia lisa's here hi from alberta canada marvelous hello from portugal hello caroline elizabeth is here with us again tonight lisa says sara lou beat starting eat beat starting eating mixed meadow <laughs> only works for the horses only joke that's a day end for you no crohn's is tough man it really is hello hello um, morning from New Zealand, here for the Daily Fix. Okay, well, like Gary and I were saying, we've been busy this evening on our, our coaching session, our group coaching session that we do on the 10-day challenge. At the end of the 10-day challenge, you've gone through the whole 15-day, you've gone through most of the 10-day, and then you get to the final day when we you book your live group coaching session with with either Gary or I or both of us both. If we're, if we're both around and we both happen to be around this evening so we both did the coaching session which was fun hi from Ontario in Canada hello hello again from Canada marvelous and and it was great we had three um uh two no three people from the states we had two people from the UK and these people don't know each other. Yet at the end of our lovely coaching session, people, you know, they're already chatting to each other and they're resonating with each other because they're like, oh, my God. And yes, that was that happened to me, too. And it's really nice. And they get to ask us directly looking at us in the eyes. What does this mean when we're on the foot, when we're trimming the foot? And it's all focused on the trim, this coaching session. And and they, they haven't got a foot with them. This is without a foot. Then after the coaching session, they have to go away and film a little assessment where they do one foot. And they they then send that to us and then we can assess it. So it and it works. It's beautifully. It works beautifully. It's really good. Hi, Ashley and Stumpy. Hello from the Netherlands. Sarah says, yes, a good forest diet and podiatrist and I'll be sorted. <laughs> Don't we all just need that? Uh, need to work on getting a pro group in the USA. We Yes, we do. We do, we do, we do. So how do you get on to 
that live coaching session and actually beyond that how do you get onto a session where you're pro you're having a private one to one with us well you can have the private one to one by booking a consultation with us but what we try and get you to do is 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 do it through a, become a vip so you go through the 15 day you go through the 10 day you get that coaching session with us with a group and then if you choose to be a vip you get a bunch more merch and you get <clears throat> oh, and you get the Who Fun Covered series, which is two webinar series of five huge webinars in each going right in depth in the horse's hoof. Uh, that's that's worth its weight in gold. You get that as a VIP. You get your merch and you get a, a, a live one to one coaching session for as long as it takes. This evening we were on on the show for oh, on the show. We were on our coaching session for an hour and a half. And it's fantastic because these are people who are coming to us and having this session going, my God, I'm so glad I found you because we have been going from here to here to here to here, from pillar to post with loads of different trimmers and farriers and vets. And they're all saying different things and everything you're saying now, it doesn't just make sense. I can see it happening in my course. Um, and, uh, and just meeting people meeting people who all have united with a passion to try and get their horses sound, healthy and barefoot. Goodness me, it is the one thing that keeps a vet practice going. If we all had sound horses, I'm not quite sure what would go on in the world, frankly, because lameness is the biggest money spinner for any vet practice. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you can read whatever you want into that, but the point is... Can you just mute yourself, Gary, slightly? Because all I can hear is Rachel doing the dishes. <laughs> um, we, we, uh, the point is that we, uh, we, I've lost my train of thought now. I can't think what I was saying. Um, yes. So all these people all united because they all just want to have the horses sound. And vets end up have spending, well, the, the the most money that people stand, spend with vets is on lameness. And when over 90% of that lameness comes from in the foot, really, we really need to start asking ourselves questions as to why people don't know more, know more about the natural foot. So it was fun. It was fun meeting everybody. I've, it, I've, it, we've had a lovely evening tonight. Hello from Australia. Hello from British Columbia, Western Canada. Hello, hello. Anne Chopra's here from San Francisco Airport. Ooh, are you going somewhere nice, Anne? Mm, you coming over to visit us in France? Uh, Sarah Lou, I like that you can print the guidebooks. Yeah, I'm a visual learner, so I'm going to get a folder I can recap with. That's right. And just you can remi remind yourself of what you learned and and yeah, we, we spent a bit of time on those guidebooks. I would really like a consultation with you before the hoof carer appointment. You can do that. Just message us privately. And uh, and if you want to, you can have a you can go on a private session. All I would say, though, is I mean, if you're up to a bit of a time limit, what can you do? You're going to have to have a private session with us and pay for a private session. But if you went on to the challenges, a lot of the questions that you're going to ask us in that private coaching session will have been covered in the 15 day and 10 day challenges. And then that's why we put the VIP in and, and, and say to people, if you want to take that one step forward further and have a private coaching session with a bunch of other goodies thrown in as well, for the same price practically as you would pay for a coaching session just on its own. But of course, when you're in a desperate situation and you need us now, we do still do private consultations. So I'll PM us. I don't put the link out publicly because we don't we we'd have to charge a thousand dollars per coaching session because to stop you from from booking them because we get a fair few. So we we will send you it privately and then you can go away and book it. It's a calendar or you can choose your own date. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Melanie. Hi, Melanie. I really want to do the challenge, but don't have enough time. Yes, I'm at a despair. OK, PM us. Tell me that you were the person. Who is that, Gary? Can you tell me who that is? You can have a look on your phone. Just PM us. Hoofing Mar go to the Hoofing Marvelous page and send us a private message. And we will. I can't hear you, Gary. You're muted. It was Carolyn Dar. 
Oh, it was Carolyn Dar. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, oh, I'm not sure if you've, you've messaged me privately anyway. I don't know. So send that message through, Carolyn, and I'll send you the link to book a private session. I'll send an email. Is that okay? Absolutely fine. Can't guarantee I'll be on it as straight away as Messenger, though, because I, we also have 10 tons of emails to go through. But I, I, I'll be, I'll, because uh, I've got to find a way of getting it back to you. You see the link. Where in Tar Ontario, Ontario are you? Is this, is it, we going to have private conversation going on here between, between our lovely guests? I think so. Fine. I think I'll, so. leave, I'll leave that one then. I think All so. right. All right. So last <laughs> night I set you a little quiz. And I said, oh, the horse is gone. I said, there are three things I want to know about. Two things are produced in the horse's gut uh, constantly. Bring me two things that are produced in the horse's gut constantly. And one thing that is produced on demand with food. Perhaps should have said that at that point. On demand with food. What are those three things? Oh, Sarah Lugo, she's she's on it. Salivary, sal salivary, <laughs> salivary gland, glands. Oh God, speak, Lenzo. Salivary glands excrete saliva by. Have you just gone into Wikipedia? Bicarbonate, which creates the bolus. Hydrochloric acid is secreted by glands to start the breakdown of food in the stomach, even when the horse isn't eating. Bile in the small intestine duodenum is continually secreted by the liver as horse doesn't have a gallbladder. That's the best I could find. I have such a better, uh, better understanding. I call it impassion and just a poor diet is. Well, you're right. Very good. Well done. First one in. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, no your message, but I also have a hard time to understand due to dread. It's okay. Don't be stressed. Don't be stressed. We'll be very calm. The, the consultation will be really calm. All I'll need from you, though, is a bunch of photographs. I can't do it blind. I can't do it just by talking to you. I have to, you have to go out and take the photographs. Go to the featured section in the Phoenix group. Go to the top, and there'll be a PDF there or an image showing you how we want you to take the photographs so that we can assess them properly. Go and take those. Get them sent to us via we transfer, not email. It will. It is email, but it's via we transfer, or you can put them up in a Google Drive or an Apple iCloud Drive, whatever it is. Send me the link, and then we'll go from there. Okay, bile saliva, which is which? There were three things you've mentioned. Two. Okay, hydrochloric acid and bile. Okay, acid. Good. What? 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 What are those two? What are those two? Are those the ones that are on demand, or continual? Um, morning. If a horse pony is born with a club foot, will always be walking on the tip of P3. Mm, are they born with a club foot? Or do they get it very early on when they're not being trimmed correctly and their limbs are not quite giving with their tight tendons, etc.? There's something to think about. Uh, gastric acid all the time, other than no clue. So is that is that like a Netherlands like word? Uh, it can't be. There are two constant. There are two vowels in it, so it can't be Dutch. Because if it was Dutch, it literally be four letters that were consonants. Sodium bicarbonate. I'm sorry. I'm so rude about the Dutch language. I don't mean to be. It's just because it's incredibly difficult, horrendously difficult language. Sodium bicarbonate on demand through saliva. Cool. Okay. I think we're getting there. Acid microbiome to microbiome. Ooh, I like that one. I like that one. That's good. So acid always there. Microbiome is always there. Microbiome. Uh huh. Bacteria for fermentation. They're always there. They are always there. They're, I wouldn't say that they were produced though, because those are um, being reproduced. I suppose. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, when they're going through reproduction, they're they they they're, they're growing in number. Stratford on. Oh, Stratford, Ontario. That's where you're going. Lovely. I'd like to say it was amazing, but I've never been there. But um, but I suppose it will be very nice. 
how many hours is that for you? It was so interesting. Three hours I sat reading in my tack room last night. Oh, God, we're just literally going to get the blame for the fact that you'd spend no more time in the house with your family, Sarah. Jeanette mm -hmm. says, we're going to say that, but Sarah got in first. Yep. Something is constant. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Acid is continuous. Yes, it is. Uh, saliva is on demand. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. In the stomach. I, oh, I think that just means hydrochloric acid. No, other, than, other than that, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Randy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, hydrochloric acid. Uh, hi again. Oh, funny enough, I think. Hi, I Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Trisha. Oh, hi, hi Trisha. <laughs> okay. So um let me find let me see if i can find an image so you are correct do you want to just talk about the saliva a minute yeah sure um so <clears throat> one of the things with um regards to the saliva when horses are mainly turned out on grass if you've ever taken any grass and stuck it in your mouth and tried to chew it up it disintegrates really quickly um, but if if the forage is much more fibrous, there is much more chewing that is needed, um, and much that that triggers much more saliva. Now, because of that chewing action, that increase in saliva, which is rich in bicarb, then goes down into the stomach which helps to uh, neutralize that acid that is continually being created um, in, the, in the gut. So you, you think about those um, big teeth that are in the mouth, and you know, I'm sure you've seen when the dentist comes around and you've got big molar arcades there. They're absolutely enormous, aren't they? And they're really rough. Why are they big? Because they have to do a lot of chewing to break down that fibrous forage. So the teeth at the back, um, the fibrous forage creating that saliva is part of the, the, the first part, I suppose you could say, of the, 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 the gut working into getting the gut healthy. It, it's it's the very start so it's very important so a lot of horses that are actually not getting enough fiber very often don't get enough saliva which is rich in bicarb which would make sense wouldn't it and um, let's face it what's the point in having these massive molar arcades if we're not going to use them absolutely and and that's crazy right we've got all these i mean have you ever looked in a horse's mouth if you looked back there all these teeth and we're asking horses to go and nibble on a bit of a, a green blade of grass grass that's this short and they go nyin, nyin, nyin. these babies are doing nothing not really yeah. i mean they'll get like enough of it in there and they'll give it a good chew but it's not it's not <laughs> difficult to chew and they've got these big molars that they're meant to be chewing so the horses, unlike humans and unlike dogs, so everybody remembers Pavlov's dogs. Do you remember Pavlov's dogs where, where he found out when he trained the dogs that every time food came, he rang a bell and then eventually he could just ring a bell and the horse was, and the dog, the dogs would slaver because they were, their, their mouths were like, getting ready, food's coming. And he realized that, that that's how they could trigger it. But it's not the same with horses. The horses have to be chewing something and that triggers it. And then they create what they call a bolus. And it's usually quite a big bolus. And the reason for this is because it's a big fibrous bolus. And so it needs something to help it slither down to the stomach. And if, if it hasn't got saliva in there, it doesn't slither down. So, no, so in fact, in humans and dogs etc particularly in humans we've got a load of amylase in our slime at saliva which is which breaks down starch and amylase is not present in in barely any quantities in horse saliva so it doesn't have an awful lot to start it's not starting to break it down like we are a minute, minute something gets in our mouth we start to break it down 
but it's not that's not what it's about with the horse really it's lubrication for the horse it's more to do with lubrication and and mother nature went well i'm going to lubricate that really fibrous lump that you've got in your mouth i need to lubricate it in order for it to get down to the stomach all fine and done and then somebody on mother nature's board put a hand up and went oh madam should we should we as soon as we're going to just stuck stuff in there should we put something else in that might help and she's like oh Okay, well, we might put a bit of bicarbonate in so that that that's sort of alkali. And then when that gets down to the stomach, that can help neutralize what's going on in the in the stomach. Little person puts his hand up and goes, oh, Madam Nature, what's going on in the stomach then? Well, in the stomach, be, just in case we don't know what's going down in that horse's stomach, anything could the horse could be eating anything. It's going in there. We just got to, you know, protect it from the bugs, and we got to start doing a bit of digestion in there. So I'm going to make sure that there's acid produced all the time, all the time, all the time. Great, great! Everybody on the board says that's fantastic. And she said, and because of that, what I'm going to do, because you know the way that the gut's sort of positioned, it 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 it's going to settle. So I'm going to change that. The, or the stomach. I'm going to change the lining of the stomach so it's kind of thicker on the bottom, so it's got more like resistance to this acid, and it's a bit thinner on top. But that's okay because the acid will never build up beyond that level. It'll never get further than that level because there's lots of fibrous stuff going on in there, and that gets absorbed in it, and it's all doing its thing, and then it gets on past there, and it goes out, and then way hey, off it goes into the small intestine, right? where when it gets in the small intestine guess what then constantly there's bile being put in there right from made from the liver now when we bile is bile's an emulsifier what does what does that mean well ever washed pots recently have you ever gone and washed your pots recently and you've taken some fairy liquid product placement or some 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 stuff that you you know what could we liquid washing up liquid washing up liquid squirt it on your fatty tray you got a tray like won't go in the dishwasher bloody thing it's too big and it's nasty it's great you cooked it was lovely to eat but now you've got a nasty nasty bowl and tray that you've got to clean it goes into the sink it's fatty you pour water in there and the fat's floating around so you get your washing up liquid and you go and then pour it in and then what happens to the fat starts separating into smaller bits doesn't it that's an emulsifier it's like breaking the fat up breaking it up that again makes it easy for to do for you to digest fat you say fat you say there's no fat there's no fat in hay get out of here yes there is because there's lipids in there and triglycerides, right? You didn't know that, did you? So there is. So the bile is produced all the time, all the time. Or in humans, we don't do that. In humans, we have a gallbladder, that sneaky little bladder that, that often gives a lot of people a bit of discomfort as they get on in life and can have a few little nasty little things growing in there that you, you gallstones that become painful that after you know you have to have taken out with key keyhole surgery or they'll some of them will reabsorb and break down but it gets stored when does it come out into the small intestine when we eat something fatty so we eat a fatty substance and then it'll it'll pour out right to help break it up but with horses no horses acid in the stomach and bile in the small intestine is produced all the time why is it produced all the time? Oh, Laura's going, ooh, what are we talking about? We're talking, you she, see, you should have been here last night. We were talking about the question I, <laughs> I set for the group. I said, give me two things that a horse produces all the, to do with the gut, two things that a horse produces all the time, doesn't stop. And one thing that's produced on demand. So on demand is saliva. When that on demand, when it's actually in the mouth, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
it's just there to lubricate really it's to lubricate that big bolus that's going down into the stomach so that's saliva it's produced when the horse eats that's an important thing that we got to talk about in a minute because it's got something that helps buffer and neutralize a little bit the stomach hmm it's important. And then in the stomach, we've got acid being produced all the time. It's good for, for uh, making sure that the stomach is a, a, a clean environment, if you like, before it all goes down into the deep depths of the other parts of the gastrointestinal tract. And we don't want it going down there with a bunch of nasty little pathogens that we don't want. So I know, but a bit of acid, that'll kill them. And then once it gets in there, you then have the bile and then the bile gets produced and that breaks down because because by the time it gets a small intestine, it's been churned around in the stomach a bit. It's been chewed and churned. It's like a bit of a mush now. And that mush is going on a bit like the mush that some people soak in a bowl and feed their horses. The horses are quite capable of making their own mush. Thank you very much. And they can create it and make the mush in their own stomachs. They don't need you to make mush for them. They can do it themselves. It's just people, I think, think the hay goes in looking like that. Maybe they think it comes out looking all like that. Well, you see it in poo, don't you? You see it like little bits in poo. I love looking at poo. Not human poo, I, I, I hasten to add. Or cat poo, because that's revolting. Or dog poo. But I absolutely love horse poo. And I'll tell you who else loves horse poo. My pig. She loves horse poo. Uh, yeah. Two things produced all the time in one thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, why, is that why bag feed is more likely to cause colic episodes? Well, is it? Mm -hmm. Is it that that's causing the colic episode? Gary, your face is so funny watching Lindsay. She gets animated. <laughs> Dear Gary. All okay until they get sick and lay down long and then gets, ooh, brandy. Now we might be moving on to a subject that this is where I'm pushing you towards. Uh, that's why the stomach needs to be half to three quarters full to prevent acid induced salt. Uh -huh. And now we'll start thinking, munching fibres for around 18 hours a day. We are beginning to think. Well done. It's very important. Sarah Lee. Hi, Sarah. Good to see you again. One more question. I've trimmed a couple of horses that had... Oh, she's back on the horse. Uh, one more question. Remind me to come back to that one, Gary. I will come... Sarah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to leave it. I'll come back. I promise. Um, yes. Uh, because it's meant to eat constantly. Don't think my gallbladder is working. It's not breaking down my fat. No, you, and me, you, and me, you and me both, Angela. <laughs> it's working actually too well, probably, because it's all going in. It's like, girl, yes, Angela likes to eat nice things. I like what Angela eats. Because the gut has three sections and they need to produce it to keep it all flowing. Oh, what are those three sections? I'd say it has more than three sections, but if you want to call it main sections, I guess, yeah, we could call it that. Uh, I would have loved to have been in your biology lessons. Your explanations are hysterical. <laughs> oh, they, I never had trouble with kids. When I first got my first teaching, proper teaching job, I don't, I'm right, let's take you away from the equine gut and tell you something about a little bit of my history. When I first was, I was a new teacher, I was a newly qualified teacher. They call you NQTs. And I got my first teaching job. In fact, I'd been teaching in a college for two years up until that point. But um, if I, I, I had, if I wanted to get into schools, if I'd been teaching any longer than that, you still have to be an NQT. So I, I didn't want to go backwards. So I had to get into schools quite quickly. And, and I had my first lab right, in the science block. And I was in quite an old school, so the lab was a big, big lab. And I walked in in the summer holidays. I knew what S2, LS, that was my tutor group. And uh, and in I went, and there was this massive great lab. And I had this beautiful, and the smell, right? I'll never forget the smell. And this beautiful oak, big oak uh, bench that, that was my desk, but it was tall, so I had to sit on a seat and I had one of those rolling chalk boards so not a whiteboard not a board that stuck on the on the wall I had a rolling one and it had three sections to it and I bloody loved it why did I love it because I'm tiny and I could pull the darn thing down and I could draw at my level 
and then I could spin it round like I'd spent like a less uh, one of my off lessons drawing the water cycle and then I could hide it and then the kids would come in and they'd be like what are we going to do today and I'd go here we go water cycle and they'd be like oh god if my kids were ever in that lab the kids loved it though but if my kids were ever there if my kids had ever turned up they'd have gone so embarrassed my mum so embarrasses me so embarrassing and uh and there I was in my lab and and I I looked at this big room and I thought how am I go-? it was it was amazing but boring and I thought how am I going to make this good I went and bought some red paint, some yellow paint and blue paint. And I made myself, if you want to be a good teacher, anybody here training to be a teacher, let me give you a top tip. You want to be a good teacher and you want to get all the nice perks of being a teacher, get in with the caretakers. Get to know the caretakers and the tech staff. Those are your key to being a great teacher. Because when you need them, when the chair breaks and some teachers or whatever happens in your room and, and you send a kid to go and get it, the caretaker will be like, be there in a minute. If I sent a kid to go and get the caretaker, they'd be like, Fra-choo! they would always be there to help me. Hey, Lindsay, I'm coming to help you. Because they used to like coming and sitting in on my science lessons as well. Anyway, I painted the, the, the my, I said to the headmaster, can I do what I like with my room, please? I painted my walls different colours. I installed a radio so that when my kids came in in the morning, I didn't want them wandering into the to the registration to silence. I had a bit of like Radio One going, and li- and they'd listen to that, and they'd all come in, and they'd be like, "Morning, ma'am." I'd be like, "Morning," and you come, come on, my little children, come on, little lollipops, lollipops. Anybody want to lollipop? It was a bit like that. Anyway, in they came. And that was me. That was my, I was a bit different. So everybody loved to come to S2. And and then if I had to stand in for other teachers, they'd be like, "Are you? have we got Mrs. Setchell? We've got Mrs. Setchell. And I'd go in. And why? Because I made them laugh. I made them laugh. They thought, don't get me wrong. Don't get on the wrong side of Mrs. Setchell. No, no. But I made them laugh. And anyway, my name wasn't Mrs. Setchell. This poor little NQT had been there hardly any time whatsoever. And there I was in my very first week. And at the end of the day, I'd have them standing like a little bu- a little army I had, you know, little soldiers. They'd all be stood like this by their desks. They'd have picked up their chairs or their uh, stools and put them on the be- their benches and they'd be waiting for the bell and I'd be like silence if I was a very new teacher silence please and this one time my my colleague who great friend of mine thought it would be funny I had a bunch of year sevens and that's the first year for those who are too old to know that it changed years ago to seven eight nine ten eleven twelve Uh, it's not one two three four five anymore and um And my colleague thought it would be very funny if he let out a bunch of year 11s early to our little vestibule to the outside world that him and I shared. And out came these kids, right? They came into the vestibule and because they didn't care, they're year 11s, right? They're to the end of the school and they were they were they were just a set that was a bit rowdy. And these kids slung open my door and shouted, Mrs. Sexual, as loud as they could, literally as loud as they could, and then ran. And I just stood there, I stood there and went red. And all the little year sevens didn't know what to do with themselves. They were just like that, thinking, I can't laugh. If I laugh, what should, what should she say? And they just, I just wanted the ground to just, I didn't know what to do. Off they went, all the kids. I let them go. I went and found my boss, who was the head of department, and I said to her, Claire, Claire, something awful's just happened. I don't know. What. First year, first week in teaching in a school, this was very first week. So I was so green behind the ears, like I did not have a clue at the uh, how to be uh, how it all happened. So I said to Claire, 
can I have a word? And she's like, yeah, what's the matter? And I said, something awful's just happened. I don't really, really know what to do about it. And she said, what's that? I said, and I told her the story. And she's just laughing in my face. She's just like, oh, she's got a hand, she's just giggling. And I'm like, what's funny? I don't know what's funny. She went, oh, my God, have you only just heard that? The kids have been calling you that all week. Like, that's your name around the school. And I just went, I was horrified. Because I thought Claire was going to go and find these kids and tell them off. I was horrified. Like, the entire school, all these kids were calling me Mrs. Sexual. And then I was like, oh, God. And she went, there's worse names. There's, believe me when I tell you, there's what, that's not a bad name. That, that's not a bad name. You can live up to that name. <laughs> <laughs> where was i yeah so that that was that was me that was my first week teaching in a school dear dear god ah, la, 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 la. Uh, sounds like a pink floyd song hilarious wouldn't it be like but yeah quite right i have so many stories i could tell you about that where where the rest of my teaching staff as i got like found my feet and i'd been there a while and i was going up the ranks right they the rest of the teaching staff be like oh god she's not having a good day she's on one as i stood at the end of the corridor going line up line up. no you've got trainers on line up like no that, that pink trainers are not gonna do no glittery belt not gonna do how big are those hoops in your ears right now how much makeup have you get? How much makeup have you got? I got it'd be like that. I I was terrible. I was terrible, but I was fun. And you teach by making people laugh. Okay, now she has students all lined up with our pants on our heads in silence. Only joking. We love you, really. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've now let that out. No, no, no! Don't uh, you've unheard it? Why did I just tell you all that? What's wrong with me? Stupid person. Okay. <laughs> Let me just share something with you. Let me find it. Let me find it. You're going uh, to share some more? I am. Not not about teaching anymore. Let's not share any of my terribly gory stories of teaching. Although they're hilarious, a lot of them. Very funny. Right. Here we have the horse's gut. Da, 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 da. Uh, here, here starteth the lesson. What's this bit? Boop. What's that bit? I'm going to have to wait for you to, to reply. Um, so I'll just sit here to you reply. This is a lag bit, lag time. What's the Lins, white bit? Yeah. It's the white bit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is so, it's the esophagus. Jeanette was like, I don't know how to spell it. I can't remember how to spell it. Yeah, now we've got, that, that just shows you've got someone from Europe, this one. There we are. And then someone from America, this one. Who decided that the should have an O in it? And who decided to take the O off? Was that because when it got to America, they were like, why do we need an O? Just get rid of the O. Nobody needs an O. How ridiculous. Let's make this, let's make this long word shorter. Esophagus. That'll do. Uh, Ashley, esophagus can't spell. Esophagus, esophagus. Correct. Um, White esophagus, lilac stomach. Vivian's getting in there. She's like, I can get it. I can tell it. I can tell you it all. I know. All right. So it's white is the esophagus. That's the bit that the bolus goes down. We're going to have a very quick, swift run through the horse's gut. That's the bit that the, the bolus goes down. What's fascinating about the difference between us as a human and the, the horse in terms of uh, the way we breathe? What is different to us and a horse in the way that we breathe? I wonder how many people are going to know this. I wonder. And, and, and I, do you know something? If the people that don't know it don't know it, they're going to go, I'm not going to admit that. It's all right. You can admit it. We're, it's only going to go all over YouTube and then the rest of the world. Don't you worry about that. Stop it, Gary. You're giving. Stop it. Stop it. Well, I've got obligate <laughs> an obligate nasal breather. Horses can't breathe through their mouth. They can't. Horses cannot breathe through their their mouth. How many people here actually thought? And, and I mean, don't I did years ago. 
I just like never crossed my mind. I just assumed they had a mouth and a nose. They could breathe through both, right? I, I just thought that. But they can't. Horses cannot breathe through their mouth. They only breathe through their nose. Put your hand up and admit it if you didn't know that. Come on, let's have it. How many people didn't know it? Be part of the club because I didn't. And I know that everybody that's saying here now horses can't breathe through that didn't know it either until somebody told them. You have to know, don't you? So that so they can't breathe through. I didn't know that until you told me, says Dawn Jackson. <laughs> I learned this from you last week. <laughs> <laughs> she learned it on the lesson last week because in because in the 15 day challenge, I do talk about the horse's gut. Right. Okay. Uh, me. Yes. Well, now you know. So next time you look at Stumpy Ashley, you can go get right up close to him and go. Are you breathing through your mouth? No. No. It's breathing through his nose, which is why they got such big nostrils. Which is why it's important when they do get breathing issues that becomes hyper, hyper, hyper important. Megan says, "Didn't know. No. Learned it from you." <laughs> Um, but everyone will loosen their nose bands and flashes now. Yes, right. They can only take air in through their nose. If and that soft bit, the skull gets to sort of here. I don't know why I'm pointing on my nose. It's really irrelevant. But that whole bottom part is soft. It's soft because Mother Nature went. Mm, if I put a skull there. It's not going to be able to expand very well, and I need it to expand big and wide so lots of air can go up it. So it goes, <clears throat> so loads of air can get up when the horse is running. They can, you see their nostrils really flare. If you've got a nose band, sorry, a, a flash band really tight over your horse's nostril, and it depends where people put them because they don't always put them in the right place, and I don't like them anyway. Um, so I'm sorry if you are using one, but I don't like them. And um, it might stop the airflow. It might stop the airflow. So there's been all sorts of things that have happened over the years. Oh, God, I'm not going to go through the whole lot. But to, to racehorses, ever heard of whistlers? I've learned an awful lot from you since 2019. <laughs> God, it's the... Dawn, I'll always remember the fact, and I and I know I bring this up periodically, learned it from my uni horse uh, course, brilliant, was the fact that Dawn Jackson was the is the only person I know I have ever come across in my entire life, and I've been obviously around an awful lot of people. Granted, I've never ha asked all every single person I've ever met, like on the bus or on the tube or wherever, this particular question, but. Of the people that I have asked the question, she's the only one that I know put her hand up. And that question was, is there anybody in this room that's never taken an antibiotic? And she went, me. And I've never forgotten it. And since then, she's been hooked and has come on a few of our workshops. But, yep, the only person I've ever met who's never taken not an antibiotic. Not hooked on antibiotics then? No, not hooked on antibiotics. <laughs> Um, they seal their lips tight when they need lots of air. Mm -hmm. Hate flashes. Yep, still no antibiotics. Good for you, girl. So they breathe in through their nose. Now, there's 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 a, a couple of procedures <clears throat> uh, that were that were created, and we're not going to go into those now, but maybe we could talk about those on a different time, a different day where they fiddle about with the larynx um, and they end up uh, opening up the larynx more to let more air in for horses that are being raced at such speeds that they were never meant to race at that speed ever and they can't get enough air in and they go blue in the tongue and they'll collapse. So in order to do that, they open up the airway. I'm not going to talk about it now because I could talk about that for two hours. Gary's nodding. Um, and um, maybe maybe one day I, I might set it as a question for you to go and find out what they are. But they will do that. And, and unfortunately, in one of them particularly, it stops the horses from making a noise. So if you if you rehab X race horses, you may have come across one that has had this procedure done and they can't neigh anymore. They take the horse's voice away. 
because no racing person no no person who's spending money on going to the races who doesn't understand about horses but they love betting on horses they don't want to hear a horse running down a track making a horrible noise we call them whistlers there's a growlers is another name they call them they don't want to hear that because it puts them off puts the puts people off they're like oh that sounds hideous so instead of that they've got a procedure that they can do that will stop the whistling it's called a hob day and then there's another procedure as well when you have a collapsed part of the larynx but we're not going to talk about that now uh but what it means is that when that horse can't it's not reversible and when the horse then goes away it can never it can never nay it can't communicate with its fellow horse species anymore by doing what they all do like today my, one of my horses was one side the other was the other side and she was like where where are they where are they and she she neighed and then a second later you heard and then she went oh there they are keep neighing i'm coming i found you these poor buggers can't do that anymore they lose their voice and they go And they can't make a sound that's grim yeah hob days and tie backs but we're not we're not going to talk about that now because it's a bit it'll make you all very angry uh i haven't used no brand of you i'm 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 the weird one just remove the bit so the seal isn't broken in racehorses they tie the tongue at the side to make sure that they breathing problems while swallow saliva it's unbelievable they do mm. But let me tell you, one race I work with had that. Uh huh. Let me tell you that all this research that everybody bleats on about, uh, ooh, I'd say probably over 90% of research that's been done in the equine industry has been funded by the racing industry, jockey club uh, organizations and racing industries and stuff. Why? Because they want to find the next best gadget to make their horse go faster. A bit like Formula One racing, really. That's where all the research is. Uh, humans don't deserve horses. It's like when they bar fire tendons. Yeah, but don't get me on that. Pin firing That's and bar firing. Hours. That's another two hours racing. Did you have terrible <laughs> ideas for money? Mm -hmm. Anyway, where were we? On the gut. So down it very well goes, this bolus, and it gets down here to the stomach. What is different between a horse and a cow? They're both herbivores. What's different between a horse and a cow? Thank you for all the information. You are, I don't even, Uta? Uta. What's the difference between a horse and a cow? It's like we could go and have a party every time we just have, wait for a lag time for, the, for them to comment. Stomachs, oh, here they come. There they all come all at once. Cow has four stomachs. Number of stomachs, absolutely. Cow has four stomachs. Cows, cows, horses, horses don't chew the cud. Yes, that because they're not ruminants. Quite right. Cow can bring it back up. Exactly. Ooh, and up it comes again, and away they go again. Cow has four stomachs, indeed. Cow has four compartments in their stomach. Yes, it does. Oh, it has four compartments. Uh, horse only has one stomach. Yep. Horse is a monogastric, a monogastric hindgut fermenter is what they call a horse. A monogastric hindgut fermenter. A cow has different stomachs. Yeah. So in the horse, you get the small intestine. All right. And it starts off with the stomach. And in the stomach of a horse, we... We don't have an active microbial uh, uh, microbiome like we do in the hindgut because obviously it's not a very hospitable environment for microbes in there because it's a little bit high in acid. And so the pH, you know, is a little bit low. So it's not really a hospitable environment. I'm not saying there aren't any in there. But I'm saying that 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 is a bit of an inhospitable environment, whereas in a cow. The very first place that it gets to in a cow, they can start fermenting. They do have microbes. It's different. Whereas the horse does all of those because they're a hindgut fermenter. In a cow, they're not hindgut fermenters like the horses. It does carry on fermenting as it goes through the cow system, but the cows can start fermenting it straight away. 
right in their stomach so with a horse they got the one stomach the food goes down and you can see this this dotted line here we go Boop. so this is where we were talking about the acid uh coming out all the time now the acid's due to it comes out all the time because the horse and people said it earlier on eats constantly at least 18 hours a day right it's a constant thing which is why if you're competing your horses or you're going out and you're doing stuff with your horses over a long period of time. It's very important that going to the show, at the show, in between things that are happening at the show, every single opportunity that you have, you give your horse hay. Every opportunity that you have, it's important that you give your horse hay. Otherwise, you could be uh, going, get, having problems with because this acid is produced very well. I'm not doing very well on this quiz. It's fine. Horses can't, they're only doing well because they've got an advantage because some of them have been through the challenges and the workshops and they know because they've heard me talk about it. So don't you worry. Pop yourself on the challenge and you'll find out. Ulcers. Gastric ulcers. How many of you right now could put your hand up and tell me that your horse has got an ulcer or hasn't got an ulcer? How many of you could 100% tell me if your horse has an ulcer or ulcers? If they've got one, they've got a few. How many could tell me that? Could actually put your hand up now and go, yeah, my horse has got an ulcer. How do you know? You, have you got Superman x-ray vision that you can see into your horse's gut like this? Wouldn't it be weird if we could all look into it, you know, if you were an X-Men and uh, my my superpower was that I could see right through? Education lets you see what's going on in the horse's body. Education when it comes to understanding biology and behavior, right? Not 100%, but highly suspect. So we're not sure, are we? We'll only know via a scope. Mm -hmm. Horse stomach are also pretty small, I believe. Yep, they're not very big. 15 liters tops. We'll only know via a scope. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now here's the thing, right? They stretch, by the way, though, because it's a stretchy sack. Uh you don't know whether your horse has got an ulcer or not. All you can do is look at behavior, which is things like wind sucking, um, weaving as well, biting their tummies, being a bit girthy. They don't want to be girthed up, being called naughty because they're cranky, because they don't want somebody on their back. Uh, they get called all sorts of different names. And in fact, actually, they probably got an ulcer. One of the biggest problems that we are facing in the equine world right now is the one you can't see. And that's the ulcers in the horse's stomach. And not just in that part of their stomach, they are in other parts of the gastrointestinal tract too. And feed in bags doesn't help because people think they can come along and give a horse a feed and they don't really doesn't matter if the horse runs out of hay you put a hay net in your horse's box and you fill it up nice and big and the horsey goes into the box that horse has practically eaten that hay net by the time you've got home got yourself into bed and having a nice cup of hot chocolate that horse has already gone through his hay net he's then got to spend the rest of his night without anything going into his stomach and he can't stop that acid flowing in. You turn up in the morning and you're like, oh, you've eaten everything. That's nice. Yeah, he ate it eight hours ago or even longer. And for eight hours, he's had nothing. And then you do it again the next night and then the next night. And then on top of that, you go, well, when he goes out in the day, he doesn't need hay. Off he trots into his field grass that's this short because it's overgrazed and he can't get enough down him and there's not enough fiber because the acid is is and the fiber is more important than the sugary melty grass that's a bit rubbish it's just full of sugars had no fiber in it barely and and horsey's like oh god 
Before you know it, he's windsucking, he's weaving, he's shitty to ride, you don't know why, health starts to suffer a bit, starts to get a bit of a dull coat, bit bitey every time somebody goes past, has a bit of a swipe at them, puts their ears back snarly, oh, he's just my horse, it's just, that's my horse, he's just different to all the other horses, like, you won't bite me. Until the day he does bite you and then or bucks you off and then you're like, oh, bloody thing. And off he goes. Off, sold, on. And then one day, having been sold on, he arrives with me, this horse with all the ulcers. And I can see he's got ulcers. I can see it. I can't see it. And I can't 100% tell you that he has. But he's got all the signs and symptoms of a horse that's had ulcers. And uh, uh, we hear things like, oh, thoroughbreds won't hold their weight. That's another reason. It's because they have ulcers. It's not just because they are thoroughbreds. They have problems. So in they come. I had a thoroughbred on my track that we uh, that windsuck so much, if he couldn't find a fence to windsuck on, he'd windsuck on any horse that would let him. So he'd just go to the rump of a horse anywhere close to him, and he'd windsuck. What is windsuck? Forcing. And remember we said that horses can't breathe through their mouths? Forcing air into a passage that they cannot, they cannot breathe down. Forcing air through their esophagus into their stomach. Why are they doing that? That's what windsucking is. And the trouble is, once they get into that habit in their little in their heads and they go, I, I got a windsuck, I got I got a windsuck, and they and then they just do it and they do it and they do it, and it becomes a thing. Not very pleasant, is it, when you're walking around a yard and you see a horse windsucking? So what are we gonna do about that? I know what we're gonna do about that. Rather than give the horse more hay. 24 7, 365, because it's what he needs, because after all, he's producing acid in his stomach the whole time, I know what we'll do. We'll paste some rather disgusting tasting crap all along the top of his uh, stable door. That'll stop him. That'll stop him. Damn it. That didn't stop him. He's still doing it. I'll paste the whole, the whole stable with it. That'll stop him. Damn it. That didn't stop it. Oh, comes the friend. You know what you want? What's that? You need you need to you need to give them a, a, a put a collar on them. That'll stop them. Put a collar on them. That'll stop them from wind sucking. Special collars. We've still not addressed the real problem that this horse is suffering from. Until one day it gets so bad that the the owner says somebody says, "Ooh, some bright spark." I wonder if your horse has got ulcers. Really? No, you don't think. Well, maybe. Oh, you better get the vet and have him scoped. So the vet turns up and they scope your horse and you find he's got ulcers. And they're not just ordinary ulcers. He's got long-standing, deep-bedded, nasty, nasty ulcers in his stomach. Imagine having ulcers in your stomach. And then being asked to jump and run and do endurance and eventing and somebody sat on your back kicking you on and holding you down tight and stopping you from being able to breathe properly. And imagine that. Imagine that. I don't think anybody can imagine that. So scope get scoped. What is the vet then going to do? This owner's just found out, and I'm not saying this is you, it may have been you in the, in a in a in a in a life gone by. If it is you now, you're going to change after this very show. I know it. But in and you or you may have inherited a horse like we do with ulcers all the time. So what's the vet going to tell you that you need to do? What's the vet going to tell you? Oh, gastro guard, twenty five pound a day. What's in gastro guards? Give it medication. You're quite right. 
Give it drugs. Of course you are. And it's expensive drug, medicine. Of course you're going to give it medicine. And what are you going to give it? What are you going to give it? What medicine particularly? Bethan said gastro guard. What's in it? Ametrazole, says Shannon. Yep, she's got it as a Ametrazole. Doesn't matter. I know what you mean. Or, <laughs> oh, like my partner calls it, Omeprazole. <laughs> Tim, Tim calls it. He said, what's that omeprazole? I said, it's not omeprazole, it's omeprazole. Because, of course, where did omeprazole come from? Humans. Where do most medications come from for horses? Humans. So omeprazole, it is a proton pump inhibitor. What does that mean? Proton pump inhibitor. Gary likes this bit, I think. In here... Right in this little stomach here, the thing that's producing the acid is what they call a proton pump. Poo, poo, bump, pump, pump, all the time. It's going on all the time, that proton pump, all the time. And what omeprazole does is it, it doesn't just slow it down, it stops pretty much that acid produ production. So it is a proton pump inhibitor. So what happens is that in here, it isn't allowed now to pump acid in because their vets have gone, well, acid, acid, mm, acid's causing the, the, the uh, ulcers. Yeah, right. Okay. So how can we stop, stop those ulcers? Well, I know. I, I know. It's obvious, isn't it? Don't put any acid in the stomach. Yeah! Brilliant. We, we found an answer. Great. You need omeprazole. You can get some omeprazole <laughs> with your carbonara. It's an omeprazole. You can have some omeprazole. And and they go and then you you the, you go you go buy it the first day and you're like how much? Uh, pardon. How long has my horse got to have this? Well, you now you're not really meant to give it for, to them for a very long time, but people do on and off, on and off, on and off. And what is what is it going to do? There you go. Switches the acid producing pump off. She's got it. Oh my god! Now digestion is disturbed. Uh, omeprazole is not even good for us. FFS. Don't know what that means. <laughs> Disrupted. Yes. No, give it hey. Nova, you should have become a vet, frankly. What should the vet have said? Okay, very severe ulcers. Omeprazole, we might give it a quick flash of that, but you know what you need to do, madam, sir, is you need to change the habits that you have with your horse. You need to get him moving because movement, believe it or not, folks, ha ha helps the gastrointestinal tract to move and do its stuff. You need your horse to move. You need your horse to eat hay whenever he wants to, ad lib constantly. Gary and I, huh, we went to a client not that long ago and the lady said, how am I going to stop this, that and the other? And I said, feed hay, 24-7-365. Not knowing why, and there are so many reasons why, of course, a hundred reasons why, but this is one of the big ones. And she said, uh, don't ask me to feed hay in the field. They've got enough grass in there. They don't need it. And I've got tons of grass. And there's enough that there's, don't ask me to feed hay in the field. And Gary and I just looked at ourselves and looked at the horse. I looked at his side and thought, oh, God. Oh, God. Don't know why my horse wind sucks. Such a pain. Then when you stop giving it the acid flow, gates open. And then what happens? Because owner hasn't changed their habits. Because the vet didn't say this is a diet and management problem, pal, and it's your fault. You need to, to start feeding hay and don't let them run out. Whatever you do, grass, got to have hay. You turn it out on grass, got to have hay. Always got to have hay or you risk that happening. And those are very particular type of ulcer, right? So that is a problem. So they get the omeprazole and then they, for anybody who's just tuned in, I do know how to say omeprazole. I'm just being ironic. 
uh, those who get given the uh, omeprazole, uh, they go, oh, fixed it. Something marvellous about, don't know, about having a drug from a vet. You feel like you've kicked it, don't you? Vet's prescribed it, diagnosed it, definite diagnosis, going to give it some omeprazole. And, and you don't change your habits, not one darn bit. When you stop the omeprazole, floodgates go back in. It has side effects too, guys, which we're not going to go into now, but it does because it's a drug, right? If it's stopping that proton pump, what other powers does it have? It has lots of magical powers, but it's stopping that one. And then what you didn't know is that your horse has a bunch of other ulcers too from stress because there's different types of ulcers. And they're not all because... It's just, you know, just just that that I've just described. It's also from stress. We know that because tests have been done on on wild ponies, on domestic horses. A test done by um, Nottingham University some years back, where they took they went to a slaughterhouse and and once the horses had been slaughtered, they looked at their stomachs and they found overwhelmingly over 75% of all domestic horses that came through the gates of that slaughterhouse had ulcers, equines, but only a small percent, I think it was about 20% of wild horses had them, and they were like, hang on, we hypothesized that no wild horses would have them because we're hypothesizing that the uh, that the equine industry is so crap the way that people are feeding their horses that that's what's causing it. Over 75%. I think actually it could have been even higher than that. And then they were like, hang on, why are these wild horses getting them? Well, they had different ulcers and they were quick, fast onset ulcers that, that come up real fast. And that was the stress of them being taken off the moors stuck in a big truck taken to the to the to the uh, slaughterhouse in a period of 24 48 hours and they already had ulcers appearing and i haven't even got further than the stomach tonight how much more can you learn how do I know all this? The vets invited a load of rehab yard owners to an evening to tell us all about ulcers. The people sponsoring the evening were the people making the drug. Hay was never mentioned. Good God. That's the reality. Let. That's the reality, isn't it? Look, there's loads of guts, horse gut. Let that sink in. Let that sink in, people. Let that sink in. Yeah. What can I do for my horse that is leaving his forage now and then just go, then just to go wind sucking on his trees? Then he goes back to his hay again out of 24 7 and gets lots of hay. Environment enrichment, other horses, a herd. Now it's difficult when they've got into a situation where they have been doing it for years. The only thing you can do for that horse is give them lots of, it's not just the hay, lots of company. Lots of movement, lots of entertainment. Put the hay around and around and around. He's moving all the time. He's going all the time. It's a habit. We call it a vice. Poor thing. It's a bit like biting your nails, isn't it? Stress is killing. Yeah. Do the ulcers heal themselves after all I'm fed? Yes, gradually. Will it stop the wind sucking? Not always but it, it'll calm down. Yeah, yeah, we people are really destructive. I know, yeah. I don't know what you're laughing at. Probably something funny I said. Oh, let the sink in. Wow, it's shocking. You are so right. Okay. There's always a method to my madness when I teach lessons. That's one of them. Is stomach ulcers. And you don't even know, because your, your horse might not be wind-sucking. Still got stomach ulcers. 
don't think that it's only thoroughbreds and sports horses. Little tiny ones can get them too. The, the little ponies that came off the moors were little ponies. Not big horses. Stress can bring them on. If your horse is continually living on his own and he hasn't got another partner, do you know if he's got ulcers or not? Do you? Oh, he's just naughty. Bad behaviour. Just naughty. Oh, he's a bit bitey, that one. You need to be careful. They're not all biteys down to that, but it's usually down to the horse being stressed and unhappy. We had a bitey horse came live with us, two bitey horses, one very recently. Mm -hmm. Well, she was more of a, you know, you know, those horse that, the horses that posture that they're going to bite, but don't actually really connect. Mm. Occasionally they connect, but most of the time they're just posturing. We had one of those. Pretty scary when these big teeth come at you. She hasn't done it for four months. How's she, Gary? No, she's um, she's, and, um, she's doing, doing really is well. Is hay better than haylage for horses with ulcers? I, I, I'd say hay and haylage are better than grass for horses with ulcers. So that's number one, right? So if you've got grass, hay, haylage, go for haylage. If all is that all you've got, haylage is going to be better than grass. If you, uh, it, the trouble is with haylage, um, it's fibre. It, it's good fiber, but haylage you've got to be careful with because it's palatable and they can consume quite a lot of it. For some horses, that's called good. For well, I say good. For some horses, we don't want them to be fat. They'll consume what they they need. But if they've been poorly, then then putting weight on them, you know, that's one way of doing it. For some horses um, uh, that are overweight, it's not a great idea because they can consume too much of it. Um, for horses that have uh, respiratory problems, yes, it's a better idea. It's strings, uh, strings, swings and roundabouts. It's all about swings and roundabouts. Should we find a swing? It's all about swings and roundabouts. Here's one. We've got let that sink in and it swings and roundabouts. Okay, so, uh, but fiber is important. Fiber is very, 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 very important. Very important. Um, we have lots of bitey face pulling horses that come here. Absolutely. And, and gradually over the time, they just become lovely, beautiful, peaceful animals again. They stop it. They stop it. I know I have the black and blues to prove it. Mm -hmm. My old pony has no teeth. Hay cannot be eaten, so he gets hay, cobs, lots of water because he does not drink any water, so I'm sure he has stomach problems, probably. But we're keeping them going, aren't we? So whatever you feed them, if you feed them a kind of slop, then, then you must make sure it's fibrous. Right. It's it's tricky. It's that That's when it gets tricky. Um. Thank you. You're welcome. My Oscar came to me as a windsucker. I suspected ulcers. Since being on track, I've noticed he now only windsucks after he's, he has his clicker training treats. So hopefully it's now just a food-related habit. Mm -hmm. Quite possibly. What about vets advising feeding less hay for laminates to reduce weight? Absolute. Can I say, can I say rude words? I've said bugger and bloody. Bullshit. Maybe I'll stop saying bullshit and I'll do that. <laughs> That's bullshit. Sorry, but it is. Stop freaking out about that. And they go the whole EMS route. Oh, we've got to weigh your weigh your hay, soak your hay. Get your horse moving. Get it out of the stable. Get it moving. You can't starve an animal. You, you, what do you think it's going to do to the rest of its body, starving it? What do you think it's going to do now to his gut? And if you feed it bag feeds or you're reducing, what, weighing hay. Oh, my God. My horse can only have seven kilos of hay when it's eating exactly seven kilos. It's not allowed to bloody bled more. That's it. Stop now. And the horse is like, please give me, please. 
I can't go without, I can't, my biology tells me I can't go without it. Stop it. Um, I'm laughing. It's exactly what I just said. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean if the hay is boiling up and drops out? It's called quidding. So it's called quidding. And quidding happens when horses get older and they, they don't have, just get your dentist to go in and have a look at the teeth, Stephanie. Just make sure. Um, and if he's still quidding, and your dentist look, and your dentist says there's nothing wrong, go get another opinion. Quitting, it, when they ball, chew it up, but they don't quite swallow it, it it's, it's part of the quitting. Why do they quit? Well, quitting is because the horse knows exactly when that bolus is ready. Uh, chew it around. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Uh, is that ready? I'll just test that with my tongue right now. Uh, 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 uh. No, it's not ready. Yum, 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 yum. Is it ready now? Ma, I think it needs about another minute or two in, in my oven mouth. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, it's ready. Here we go now. I can swallow it now. It's all good. When they quid, they're like, is it ready? I'm not quite sure if I can. Oh, I'll spit that one out. That's definitely not going to be ready. I'll try another one. Bugger. It's not ready either. That's quitting. Thank you. <laughs> Say bullshit like in the bullshit BS, man. We have a horse that came here recently whose vet removed its hay net from his stable and said he doesn't need this now. He started eating his own poo. Stop it. What are these people taught at school? Stop it. Feed horses hay. If they're overweight, Walk them, move them, get them on a track. Tracks are beautiful for so many different reasons if you do it properly. And you put hay around and about to make them move. Think every time in the winter time when you chose to have a horse, you chose to have a horse, and in the winter you don't want to go and put the hay out because, A, you're tired. It's cold. It's windy. It's raining. They'll be all right having their hay in the in the in you know in the stable. And then the next night, and the next night, and the next night, and the next night. Remember that person that Gary and I talked about who fed her hay over the fence near her kitchen window because she wanted to see him. That goes on. How much is your horse moving? It ain't. You chose to have a horse step up. Specialist animals. If you had a zebra, would you treat, treat it differently to a horse? You would, because it's got a stripy coat. And and the zebra wouldn't put up with it. That's why we don't ride zebras. Unless you've seen Racing Stripes, which is one of my kids' most favourite films of all time oh, by Universal. It's literally that's the best film, film ever. <laughs> Racing Stripe. We, I, I, and I, what, I, I remember when that came out before I knew a lot of this stuff. And sadly, now when I watch Racing Stripes, I'm like, oh, God, I don't know whether I can watch it anymore. I don't know. It's ruined it for me. We have rehab for 12 years plus and never, ever restricted hay. Always 24-7 with no rhino clover. Flipping perfect. Glad to listen to this before takeoff. Lots to digest. Cool. Go to Stratford, wherever it is, in Ontario, I think you said. Click training can induce stress in some horses, even low level, something to think about as wind sucking after training. Yeah. Okay. So, but if he's a wind sucker, yeah. So it's all things to think about because they're not dogs when it comes to, and I'm not going to start the clicker training debate. I'm really not. I'm not. I'm not going to go there because I, that's probably a step too far. Could it just be the hay is soft? It doesn't happen with all the hay or more fibrous. The hay might be too fibrous. So just make sure his teeth are checked. Just make sure his teeth are checked. And like if you say, if he's a good way, he's getting it in, isn't he? He's getting it in. But just it's something to monitor. It happens when they get older. And as your horse is a beautiful 31 years old, you know, the wind is blowing the hay all over the place. Find something to put it in. Like tires or stuff. Tires are good. Nets. Um, sorry, I missed what you said about the dentist about quidding, not quibbling, quidding. What should I be looking for the dentist to say? You just want the dentist to get in the horse's mouth and tell you that because he's 31 years old now, you need to know what's going on in there. 
Is he is he losing tooth? Has he got any loose tooth teeth? I'm sure you do have his, his teeth looked at, but he they need to look at that. And when they're old, it can change very quickly because their teeth are erupting, and he's only got so much left now. So when they get to the top, they're hypsodont teeth because they're born with the whole crown, and the crown erupts erupts as it gets worn away, and then that will just fall out. So it can happen at any time when they're old. So just keep your eyeballs on it, and and you may have to have your dentist turn up every six months or even less than that. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah. Where was Sarah's question? Can you ask it again? But I think we're done. I think maybe Sarah will do yours at the top of the show tomorrow. And to I promised, and I and, and and I promised everybody that was on HM that saw me for five minutes live on the public, I promised them I was going to talk about something, but instead I didn't, and I'm going to set it as a question oh. instead. Here's Lindsay's question of the day for tomorrow's live show. Are you ready with a piece of paper and a pen? Yes. She read it. The big man. I want to know a couple of things. I want to know how was well, so much around this. Here's a question for you. As a hoof care professional, Occasionally we see horses who abscess quite a bit right at the very top of their toe in the coronary band. And over time, they produce a big white streak all the way down their hoof. A white streak. Never had the white streak before. But now they have what we call the Malin streak. How many, how, how many people are old enough to know what I'm talking about? The Malin streak. Why? Da, 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 da. Why have they now got a white streak down their hoof? No, no, you're not allowed to answer it. No, 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 no. Yes, well, good. Hold, hold on to it. Why have they got a white streak? Now, I want a full answer, a full scientific answer as to exactly why. Not just a thing. I, I want to know exactly. And again, how clever biology is that we forget about when we chop toes off. Biology is such a clever thing. It's, got, it's, not, it's not about chopping toes off, but it's about the fact that up there somewhere things are happening. That's your question for tomorrow. Did you enjoy this evening, folks? Or today? Sorry, Gary, I didn't let you speak much. That's all right. It was very entertaining. <laughs> you, you were on fine form today with your stories. I was on fine form today. Stories oh, good. Stories before good. we go, before we go, in case you've all buggered off, and I should have said that. Yes, clap, 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 hurrah. Before we go, Gary and I were chatting today. And we are going to, we've decided that we are going to have a new HMB Pro intake in July. Oh, yes. Jul July the 8th. I wonder what you were going to say then. <laughs> July, July the 8th to be appropriate, to, to be exact. Appropriate? To be exact, July the 8th, we're going to have the Clydesdales, the Clyde group. We've got the Cobbs going through at the moment. We're on C. And the Clydes, the Clads Clydesdale. If you want to be a Clyde, and you want to become the next very, very well-informed person to walk this earth and and thrill people at dinner parties and in your tack room because you know lots of information like our HMB pros do. And you want to be a professional. you got to get through the 15-day challenge. you got to get through the 10-day challenge. And you've got to do it before July the 8th. And if you sign up to become a pro we will give you the 10 day challenge, the money you paid for the 10 day challenge off your uh, payment for the course. We'll take it like that as a deposit and we'll take it off the payment for the course. July the 8th is our next intake. And for everybody that's watching this YouTube, YouTube um, in 2028, 
We are now on the 21st of March, 2024. So it is July the 8th, 2024. So if you are looking at this next year or the year after or the year after that, it isn't, it's, it, it, it's gone. July the 8th went <laughs> a year ago, right? So it's just now. Okay. Stop so teasing me. The challenges. Nah. The challenges. Gary, it's look the at that. Challenge. Look at that. How how old is our oldest person? Um, without letting out the bag, how, who uh, it is? Uh, sixty-two. 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 And and sixty-two <laughs> and making a change, incredible change, and loving every minute of it. Enjoyed it immensely. I think I've watched so many of your videos lately that the voices in my head when I talk to my sound I have an English accent. <laughs> Ohio USA accent losing ground. I love to hear it. Randy said, uh, Facebook, Randy Van is, is because when you leave it, it will get infected. Oh, I don't know. Um, usually after 24 is the hay isn't any good. Okay. That was, that's a hay question you're all talking about with each other. I'm going to go because I'm done and, and think on. If you want to be a pro, come talk to us. Come and get It's one of the best days to start. Because it's Gary's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> July the 8th. July the 8th. All right, my lovelies. It's been lovely speaking Thanks to you this evening. In. We may do more gut another day. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye.